this woman found out that her boyfriend is a PP bro. So she. So I've told y'all that I lurk in the PP bros subreddit. And I knew that that post that went viral about the woman that her ex boyfriend is a PP bro, I knew it was going to make it over to their, their, um, their group. And it did. Okay, so this man says, about nine days ago, a post about a Central European woman who has been dating a Western man in her country for work went viral on Reddit. Recently, she snooped and looked up his internet history and found out he was looking up information on PP bros in locations where women were traditional. For some reason, this triggered her and caused her to break up with him. Personally, I believe the story is fake, but that's beside the point. The real issue is the thousands of negative comments about PP bros and the PP bro movement filled with Fritos, misogynists, um, SEX tra um, traffickers, and great fists. Many have claimed that they will make it their mission to get every Passport Bro subreddit removed. Personally, I don't want PP bro subreddit removed. I want them to continue to talk so that I can just share what they're saying. This is why we do not allow any negative comments about women or men on this subreddit. There are people who are ready and willing to use any measure to get this subreddit and the PP bro movement shut down. Please take this in, in account before you post or comment. And like I said, I don't want them silenced. They need to continue to talk so that other women in other countries can be aware of what is going on. So for some of the comments in this thread, this person says there are way too many posts bitching about Western women. If a PP bro tries dating overseas, he'll instantly stop caring. I prefer non-Western women, but that doesn't mean I hate Western women. I respect their standards and behaviors. If they want their man to be over six feet tall and earn six figures, that's a legitimate standard. Even though I have neither of those qualifications, I wish these women the best and hope they find someone like that. And the OP responds with, the problem is that too many guys here never do as far as like go on trips. Um, they just continue to whine about Western women, which causes trolls from feminist subreddit to invade your space or our space and destroy the quality of our subreddit and move. Just know, I don't ever comment on their post ever. I lurk in their spaces. I don't talk or pet, like, you know, give any opinion on them. I just screenshot, take their words, and then share it with y'all. This person says, I think the most hateful comments towards women on here come from men who never travel abroad nor intend to. They're LARPing, essentially. And LARPing stands for live action role playing. So they're just acting like they're PP bros, but they never actually go anywhere. And this person says that fits generally the type of people who whine and complain in life are usually the ones with zero drive to make any real change. So these these PP bros are like, look, go out, live. If you want to date these other people, just go date them. Quit talking about the women that you don't want. But the Red Ranger disagrees. He says we aren't whining about Western women. Most of the posts you see here is actually the opposite. We recognize that they have their standards and we want no part of it and go elsewhere. We recognize that out there is better in every way. So we make a decision, a costly one at that, to travel away. We plan, ask for advice for the best spots, the most beautiful beaches, the best living conditions. Some even try and learn the native language. We're culturally enriching ourselves and even better, they should be happy we're leaving, but yet they constantly berate us. Why, you wonder? They call us PP bros. They call PP bros every disgusting name in the book because if enough people do it, the Western women start to see that they're no longer wanted. It's simple supply and demand. It's a movement that gives back power to the PP bros to go into other um, countries that may be underdeveloped with lacking resources to be miniature colonizers of those women and um, get a patriarchy on a budget. That's what they want to do. Be patriarchs on a budget because they can't fulfill those um, roles here and live up to those standards here. And then this person responded to that man saying, you are so delusional, LOL. Do you not see how y'all berate both Western and Eastern women? It just seems like a fetish that y'all want to achieve, 
because you generalize a whole population of women. Not every woman outside of the West is weak or submissive. In fact, you do them wrong, you'll be put in your place very fast. Just seems like you live in a bubble and have never dated outside of the West if you really think this ridiculous way. Being submissive does not mean you'll get away with wrongdoings. Okay, this person says 100% agree. I hold no qualms with Western women. I feel like there's pros and cons to dating Western women and women from other countries. There's, lot, there's a lot of people, I think, that are consumed with the red pill conversation that consume dating and the social sphere. I feel like a lot of that has become inter intertwined with PP bros and is being seen as the image. I agree. I see a lot of PP bro and red pill conversation that just is squished together. Okay, so then this person says agreed. I want to say international dating is ruined, but I don't know if it was ever good. So many guys on here have this mindset of them going abroad and that's going to show the Western women um, somehow and they would suffer and realize how good the guys were, lol, kind of like a revenge fantasy. I think the people on this sub lack self-awareness because anytime you try to discuss the issues, they seem to deflect and go for no true Scotsman's fallacy, aka no real passport bro will do say this, only the fakes do the thing that you called them out on. So I just wanted to let y'all know that the PP bros were having a discussion amongst themselves. And y'all know, like I said, I don't talk on these threads. I just report back. Y'all let me know what you think about this one. For the longest time, Black women have always been the scapegoat where it comes to the out of wedlock rate, single parent rate. It's always been laid on our feet. And they've been able to get away with it for decades because their marketing was just better. Um, black women have the stereotypes and the stereotypes are negative. And so these, these Ash Guardians were able to go to the white women and let them know that they were so much better than us. And they use that anti-black woman sentiment to triangulate with those women. And those women were just like, yeah, I got your man. And then look. Now, who is becoming the biggest chunk of single mothers? Who is becoming? So they ran through that subcategory and then they started going through other non-Black women as well. And the biracials of TikTok are, show, are telling the story. Now we got the passport bro movement. And so they have aren't many bridges. The single parent rate is still climbing and Black women know that it was not just all Black women that are at fault for this single parent phenomenon. We know, we tried to say something, but the whole triangulation of, you know, y'all are just this, you know, all the, the negative stereotypes, the Jezebel, the over, the hypersexualized, all of that, that got ladled on us. And so they weren't prepared for what these Ash Guardians would do to their communities as well. Now the same thing is happening as far as this PP bro movement. And these women are now becoming the face of single motherhood as well. And so that is this story of Daniela and Mike. You can look at the age gap. He was 40. She's 19. And she captioned it, the story of how I became a single mom of two from an American passport bro. I am just using screenshots because she put music behind it. She says, Mike from Miami, Florida traveled to Europe. That's the start of her story. We had a relationship. I fell into his lies. He just lied about having a relationship. And look at her. Fit, feminine, friendly, everything that he wanted and desired. She says, he made me pregnant at 19, gave birth at 20, right after first baby became pregnant again, gave birth to a second baby at 21. I was pregnant and all alone. So this is the reason why they go for that younger demographic because they are not prepared for the game that older women might already recognize. This woman probably thought that she was special. She probably wasn't ready for what was going to come down. She wasn't prepared for the game. After two kids found out he was a passport bro who made relationships in America and all around the world, and I was just one of the girls he talked to. He told other women he will impregnate them. He talked to a woman and told her, that he has a strong desire to impregnate several women. He told me 
that he can have several wives that have, that have his children. Okay, she says that he abused me emotionally and physically. I told everything to his mother and she defends her misogynistic woman abuser son that she raised. He also financially abuses me and our kids. So this is the TikTok creator if you want to go to that post. So for some of the comments, this woman says, can I ask you a question? Did no one warn you about black men? They're pretty notorious. They do this to all women. It's so sad. I'm sorry. And Daniela said, no, I had no info, no expectations. I thought we were all the same, pretty much. It's the 21st century and accept all cultures. And Petra says, I see, I'm a black woman and would never date them. They are brought up to abuse and discard women. Unfortunately, that is the culture. Listen to the music. Black women have been saying these things, but for whatever reason, our voices get muted because the stereotypes about black women being hypersexualized run rampant. We're at fault for all of these things. This person says the first red flag was the age gap. These PP bros travel to other countries because they can't fool the women in their countries. And then she says, I only found that out later. And then the woman says, women their own age won't fall for their crap and they have their own money. So they go to Asia and Eastern Europe to get feminine submissive girls. And, you know, let's put emphasis on the word girls. They do this on purpose. And then after they drop two babies in them, then those now women get labeled as used up. They get abused. They get talked about. So another post that she made, she was like, beginning in 2023, husband kicked me and two babies out of his house. That's one of the issues. And that's the reason why they don't like feminists. They don't like feminists at all because a feminist could get on her feet. They bring these women over here. They have no control because they're not controlling um, their finances. They're in a new country. It, it would take a lot more for her to rebound than getting a grown woman who has a job and has support. End of 2023, single mom of two. So basically, she was treated the exact same way despite being fit, feminine, and friendly. They get the same person. They get the same treatment. And these stories need to get put out there. There needs to be some kind of awareness in these other countries. And, you know, this really does kind of vindicate what Black women have gone through because Black women have been shouting this from the rooftops. But we just get labeled with the negative connotation of bitter, angry, masculine, all of that stuff. But you guys go ahead, weigh in. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to like, comment, and share.